All right, so today I'm gonna to be showing you how you can create some mockups for your digital products using AI. Okay, so to get started, I want to first give a shout out to Hugo Ventura or at Hugo VNTR on Twitter. He's the one who found this and we're going to be using this prompt, but we're going to add a little bit more to it. And so just to give you an example of what we're going to be creating today, as you see, you have like a lady that is holding the phone and the phone is completely uh, keyed out. So now basically, since this is keyed out, you can go in here and you can add your own image to it. But one thing I'm also going to do is showing you how to fix these kind of weird things that happen. Like if I scroll down to this part, you can see that, you know, you get, <laughs> you see, you get a lot of this weirdness that happens with AI. So I'm going to show you how to avoid that and how to fix that if it does show up within your generations. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and jump over to Discord now. And I added the Mid Journey bot to my own server and I just created a new text channel. And this is where we're going to be making our mock ups today. So, for the prompt we're going to be using is called Over the Shoulder Shot of a Person Holding an iPhone with Completely. And then you enter your color screen. And then I'm adding to it dash dash no and then you add the color that you're using reflections so now the reason i'm doing that is because if we look at this other one that i've generated before um since the ai is kind of taking into consideration the whole image it's going to add reflections onto like the face hands hair so by adding no reflections it's going to remove that and you're going to get a much cleaner output so Let's make sure to include that within your prompt. Okay, so now we're going to start to generate using this prompt. So I'm just going to go in here to this prompt and just change out the words for um, the subject that I want. So over this sort of shot of a, I'm going to say woman holding an iPhone is fine. And with completely, let's say green screen, that's fine. And then I'm going to say no green reflections. Okay, and now we're going to input our prompt. Okay, and we got our four images here. And what you really want to pay attention to are the hands and make sure that the positions look somewhat natural. Um, it does a lot of weird things when it comes to holding, you know, an iPhone. Like, look at this one, her hands completely backwards. What is that? What is that? <laughs> so, Wait, you know, obviously you want to avoid that one. I would probably re-roll this again, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to go with the best option here. And I think it's going to be this top left one i'm noticing that there's some weird thing going on with her thumb here but that can be fixed easily and also her finger here is also very too long um, but that can also be fixed but overall i would say that the hand positioning is normal and there's no extra green reflections on here and you can also see a lot of the screen okay so now we're going to go over to the upscale and upscale number one and to download it, I'm actually going to go to the Mid Journey website. If you don't know, they did a completely new update to the website and it's a lot more easier to locate your images. And I believe it works a lot more faster when it comes to updating your generations. I'm going to go ahead and refresh that. And yep, there is the image. And I'm just going to go over here to this button and download this. So we're going to open this up in Photoshop and that's where we're going to fix this and it's also where we're going to allow this to be um, editable so you can create custom psds and allow people to upload their own images to the phone okay so now we're in photoshop and first thing we're going to do is make sure that we convert the background layer to a regular layer okay so first thing i want to fix is this weird thumb thing so I'm going to take advantage of the generative fill where that's within Photoshop and I'm going to go over to our selection tool and I'm going to select the polygonal lasso tool. You can also just use the regular lasso tool, but um, I much prefer the polygonal. So I'm just going to select this part here and try to follow the contour of the um, thumb, how I think that thumb should naturally flow here and then I'm going to hit generative fill and um, not put anything within the text box here and just hit generate and there we go we can scroll through these to see if there's anyone that's a little bit better and I'm gonna go with number three 
And there you go. Now it's we it, uh, that weird part is gone. Uh, we still have a little bit like kind of discoloration going on here, but I think it's fine. Okay. And next we're going to fix this part. So we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to go with the polygon lasso tool and select this part wherever we think uh, best fits the contour and then hit gender to fill. Okay. And there you go. You can see that both of those issues are not fixed. And one thing that I like to do is to go over to our gender to fill layers and just right click and rasterize them. And then I go ahead and shift select all of them and hit merge layers. Okay. So now what we want to do is make sure that we can add our own images in here. So let's say if you're using your own product or if you're going to be uh, turning around and using this to actually sell your own mockups on like Creative Fabrica or something, we want to be able to edit the screen screen. We don't want to just leave it blank. So first way is to go over here to your tool selection, go to the magic wand tool and just do a baseline selection over that. I find that it tends to come in uh, too close there. So we just go over to the select menu, go to modify, expand, um, usually by about one or two, you just have to judge and see. So that's one and that looks pretty good to me. So we're just gonna um, right click and hit layer via cut. And there we go. We got a lot less green going on on the outside. There's still some more pieces here. So I'm just going to go in with the polygon lasso tool. All right. So now that we have the background transparent, we can pull in image, uh, any image that we want. So I'm going to go to file and place embedded. Okay. And once it's in here, just go ahead and drag it underneath your, um, fill layer or your mid journey generation layer. So now you can kind of move this around to whatever place you want. And there you go. Now you have a mock-up for your product. Okay. So now let's say that we want to turn this into a mock-up that we can sell like as a PSD on creative market, you can leave a stock image here and then just make sure that your image is set to a smart object. And then we can rename this to place image here. And we can lock this top layer here so that they don't try to move this part. And now all they have to do is double click this. And now they can go in here and place whatever image they'd like. And then go to file and save. Typically that is the way it's supposed to work, but I've been having issues with my smart objects for some reason. But when you're setting up a mockup for people to download, that is how you want to do it. Okay, so one more thing I want to add. If you notice, the quality on this image is pretty low, which I think is fine if you're using it for a thumbnail on Etsy, but let's say you want to update this to your, your website or something. This is pretty much not the optimal resolution that you want to use. So one alternative that you can do to fix this is use an upscaler. So the one I'm using here is Magnific, but it's like about $40 a month. So it's pretty steep price point. Um, there's also another alternative to this, which is Creo, which is another upscaler that is free, but it's not as good as Magnific as I would say. But if you're looking to get a little bit more quality out of the generations that you're using, then I would say try to run it through an upscaler and see what you get. Um, only thing about these upscalers as they tend to add a lot of extra details here. So um, as you see, the hands are really, <laughs> really wrinkly here. And then also there seems to be like a second ear here. So it's kind of a trial and error with these upscalers. It's pretty new, um, but you could also just take this into Photoshop and fix up any of the extra areas like this extra ear here. So um, just an alternative if you're just looking to get a little bit more quality out of the uh, generations. And yeah, that's it. So this is good if you want to use it for any type of mock-up, usually for digital products. Um, I use a phone here, but you don't have to. You can use a computer screen 
You can use a painting canvas, anything that is kind of square form, I guess, or what? on display. 